we're already off to a bad start. Yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another fantastic episode of the Post Credits Podcast. My name is Brian Show. Over there is Mr. Matt Pepler. How are we doing, sir? I'm great. I also realized that I never asked you how you're doing on these shows. How are you doing? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty okay. good. Yeah. You're all snazzy. You're wearing a button up collared shirt now. Well, you know, underdressed. I, I decided I, to join up. You know, someone has to. Yeah, I can't be the one. So, uh, no. So, yeah, things are going good, man. I just want to say I I, I love uh, all the enthusiasm that you're getting for your movie. You know, oh, I was doing you. the social social media stuff for uh, uh, the podcast uh miranda who i guess that we had on i was doing the social media stuff and i had mm-hmm. to grab links in and whatever and I, back to your youtube channel i'm like hey views are getting up there they yeah. are cruising yeah that's awesome so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm really happy with it too and uh th- it's actually been fascinating because like some of the I, i've been cyber stalking the analytics and there's certain things that like actually have like not just the viewers but like the level of audience retention is actually going up, which almost never happens. Usually it starts like you, you have kind of a big thing in the beginning and then it kind of starts dropping off as like, you know, like your more faithful people, like your subscribers or your, you know, cast and crew aren't watching all the way to the end. And I've, I've actually seen a slight uptick in like people that are hanging on. So it's like, well, there's don't change a thing. There's something, (laughs) you did something right (laughs) about this one. Yeah. But um, kudos, man. That's oh, awesome. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah, we can throw another link up to that in the description. Oh, that's we'll that's Fear of the that. Dark back there. That's the movie yeah. we're talking about. Mr. Matt drew the title logo for it. He doesn't get enough credit for that. But uh, I, I, a couple people have commented on like how, how nice that looks. And Awesome. Yeah. No, I was happy to do it. It was good stuff. And I'm glad everyone's liking it. You know, I, I spent a a lot of time <laughs> I'm making that probably more than I think uh, if anyone knew how much time I actually spent on it, uh, they would be like, you are the slowest artist on this planet, Matt. If that, it and it did take me a long time. It very long, hmm. you know? So, but I wanted to get it right, you know, wanted to button it up, you know, make everything. I mean, you spent enough time on this one. I'm like, well, I got to do the same. I can't give you some half ass shit. You gotta step you know? it up and bring it up to that <laughs> yeah, level. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I, I'm happy I, you like it. Yeah. Glad everyone else has, has enjoyed the fun and, you know, I've reached out to you and said that they like it. That's awesome to hear. So. Yeah. But anyway, snakes on a fucking plane. Oh, my. Oh, my good word. So before, right before we started rolling there, we, we kind of like had that famous line, right? Where it's Sam Jackson. Yeah. Do you, you yeah. want to do the honors? Oh, I. I don't think I would that's, do it. That's Justin. it. Yeah. I've had it. Had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. All right. And and I came in with something you said was nonsensical. But the story behind that is there's there is a TV edit of this movie. Oh, I love and, TV edits. And obviously they couldn't say that line. Yeah. So the, the line in the movie was in, instead of what we all know and love, it was I've had it with these monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday plane. Wow. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> that's, that's an amazing edit. Um, yeah. Uh, I, that's too many, too many random things in there though. Right. Like Monday to Friday plane. I mean, it's just going from Hawaii to fucking los angeles that's only like five hours or something i don't think it's that much nah, anyway. i mean they keep them running so i don't know who knows yeah. it's monday to friday plane some of what those was the are... famous one from like die hard where it wasn't it like yippee Kaye, mother butler or something like that oh i don't know i i like to say mother butler because it's a brand of syrup um <laughs> <laughs> syrup. um where are you getting your syrup or, no. Is that a Detroit is syrup? It, is it pancakes or something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the Detroit brand it's, of it's maple like, syrup. It's some variety of <laughs> breakfast motor product. Oil. It's sweet and motor oil. <laughs> it's some it's some variety of breakfast <laughs> product. Um may, maybe that's why nobody gets the joke, is because it's like one of those brands that just doesn't exist anymore. But uh Yeah. No, I I don't know. 
I, I I don't know what the tie hard edit was, but that that was that was my story behind this. <laughs> this monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday plane. Mm-hmm. Um, did you know what this movie was originally going to be called? I d- do you know that so, I've never seen this movie before. <laughs> Neither have I. Neither have I. This oh. was my first time. Okay. Yeah. I um this came out when I was like I, I took movies very seriously, surprisingly, even though I had kind of bad taste in movies. There was movies that I like that are still really good, you know, but I also liked Blank Man at the time as well. Uh but uh um I just thought this movie looked incredibly stupid. And I was just not having it so i never watched it and the only reason why i have it i own it is because it's in a three-pack with two movies that i do like a lot you know which is long kiss goodnight and uh deep blue sea you know you you asked me if rennie harlan directed this and yeah he he did not um sam jackson is the through line yes but you know the book ends because snakes on the plane is the middle movie you know our rennie harlan right deep blue sea and uh Long Kiss Goodnight, aren't those both Rennie Harlan? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, logically, I was like, it's got to be Rennie Harlan, but it's Mm -hmm. not. This guy also directed Shark Night, you know, which... I I think New Line Cinema might be the other... Oh, yeah, it could be. Could be. New Line Cinema. Or just Warner Brothers, because they own New Line. I don't know, whatever. So, (laughs) what was this movie supposed to be called? Oh, 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 well, OK, so it did start. This was like Snakes on a Plane was like a placeholder thing for a script, right? They didn't have a title. So it was like oh, we're just we're trying to get this movie going and we're just calling it Snakes on a Plane. Right. Mm-hmm. And then before it was to start production, they changed the name to Pacific Air 12. <laughs> I don't know the significance and I Google search Pacific Air 12 and nothing came up. But uh, Samuel, when Samuel Jackson got on board, he said he he was doing a movie called Snakes on a Plane and that's what it should be called. And I think if, I think you just listen to Samuel Jackson when he yells that at you because I'm sure it wasn't just saying that under his breath, you know? Oh, so. yeah. I heard he threatened to walk because the whole reason that he wanted to do the movie was because it was called Snakes on a Plane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, they, uh, yeah, uh, Ronnie Yu was gonna direct this, and then he had to back out for some reason. And then New Line called him back, and they're like, "Do you still want to do this movie? Like, because we we don't think you really want to do this movie." He's like, "It's called Snakes on a Plane, right?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> just think of it in how Samuel L. Jackson talks. You uh-huh. know, yelling, yelling, and yeah. So I think Snakes on a Plane is a better title than Pacific Air Twelve. Yeah, whatever I mean, the it, fuck that means. It tells it tells you that the movie's about a flight, but it doesn't tell you why. He, like, like there's nothing intriguing about it. Like, this is why I want no. to see this movie. No, not at all. So I'm and, glad it's snakes on a plane. But but after seeing it, I enjoy this movie. I like it. Yeah, although dated. No, yeah, yeah you're kind of. Eh. See, yeah. I put it in the I put it in the like the Piranha remake category where it's just like i don't know if i was uh recovering from a awesome night you know or whatever i think this is the the right type of tempo for me where it's not like i don't have to think about what i'm watching but i could probably enjoy this a few more times oh, okay. you know um i i usually don't look up what other people think about these things because i don't want to have I, I don't want you know someone else's thoughts to color my opinions I just couldn't resist seeing some of the reviews for this because I know that the internet went crazy. So I did screen grab some of those and I would like to read some of those later. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I, I didn't read reviews on this. So, I mean, these are all user reviews, which are obviously the best kind of reviews because a lot of them are like very passionate, like overly one-sided kind <laughs> yes. of things. So we have that to look forward to at the end. So if you don't like my opinions or matt's opinions it's totally fine yeah we've got some second third and fourth opinions here and they're one at least a couple of them are pretty juicy excellent (laughs) i'm looking forward to it if you uh save them they've got to be they've got to be golden yeah so you're kind of about this 
what makes you go hmm yeah and uh, and mm -hmm. and not uh i'm ready for it like it was just yeah uh, <laughs> bring it or not <laughs> yeah that was a veiled attempt to mimic the song at the end which i've i've heard the song before oh my god it, um, it was my first time for everything you told me that there was a song and i was like oh my god no why you know yeah and i am i'm always i have talked about wanting to wanting action movies to bring back the love ballad you know like mm -hmm. leon womack from con air and every celine dion song she ever made is probably attached to some movie you know and i want that back but then i heard this song and i was like no we don't need this back <laughs> you know this thing we don't need back the love ballads we need that back you know See, I wonder if this made me think the movie was going to be more fun than it was because this was so just goofy, like the Cobra Starship song, Bring It, Snakes on a Plane. Yeah. Uh, it's by, just yeah, like, Cobra wow, Starship. like this is a song made by the internet for the internet. Like it just felt like, and, and it was apparently the... Uh, once the buzz machine kind of grabbed this movie and the internet started running away with it, <laughs> I I think that's when they're like, hey, you know, we made a serious like 90s action movie with a ridiculous concept instead of a ridiculous movie that people want to watch or that people yes. think they're going to watch based off the title. So we need to strike a some kind of balance with it, right? So they, they did, a I don't know, five six days of reshoots um and i i feel like this song was added during that period where they're like we've got to retool this we need something and i i remember hearing the story behind the band make because they weren't a band until this like they they were just put in contact with each other and they wrote the song over the internet and i'm pretty sure i could be wrong but i want to say during the interview i heard the band say that the first time they met in person was while they were shooting the music video for this song. Well, I would, I would believe that, you know, I would a hundred percent believe it. This song is trash. <laughs> this is like nightmare fuel. Remember, Oh man, I don't even, it was like the ting tings or something. Um, that's not my name, you know? No. My sister really liked that song. I remember one summer, it was like we were adults. We were doing adult things, and she could not stop playing this song. This was like five or six years ago, and I felt like it was the same type of energy where it's that like super produced pop music mm -hmm. that's like adults made it, but it's like for 10 year olds, you know? Okay. Like that's, that's the vibe I'm getting. And I just, I, it's, I can't stand that type of music. And so this, to go back to this, this fucking song, you know, uh, 16 years from when it, or when it came out, mm -hmm. it's like, oh yeah, it brings back all of that, you know, all of that, uh, bullshit energy from like the early two thousands of like what yeah. music was like then. Mid, and then two thousands, your plastic, fantastic yeah. Barbie world. Like, yeah, yeah. Where it's like, oh. no, that like a producer made this song, it's got, not musicians. It's got a chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's I'm something so glad evil in the air. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad you brought brought up this band in particular, and because uh, we we both like some pretentious bullshit every once in a while, yeah. you know. And I, I came across uh, how the the leader of the band, the singer, who's got the most annoying face on the planet, you know. Uh, he, um, Gabe Saporta, uh, he, this is how the band came about or his idea for the band. He took a trip to Arizona where he smoked peyote with a bunch of Native American tribes and went on a vision quest. And then he had, during this vision quest, he thought of a, uh, a new band that had a melodic style of music heavily influenced by synth pop and hip hop. It just seems like that's the most pretentious way to come up with a band. 
I don't know. Like, I, I got to get my mind blown to smithereens with hallucinogens to come up with an idea that people have all the time, <laughs> you know? See, I, I would have thought you were going to say, like, you know, he smoked all these drugs and had a vision quest because someone gave him the job of making a song called Snakes on a Plane. <laughs> right. Well, oh, I mean, God. I think what am I do? I think I have to get pretty inebriated <laughs> with this job, you know. You got got what am I doing today? Uh, well, you got to you get to make a theme song for a movie. What's the movie? Snakes on a plane. Oh Good yeah. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. So, w- do you think uh the LL Cool J song for Deep Blue Sea is better than this one? That's actually kind of catchy. You could sing that and not be ashamed. You know, it, you might, it's kind of nerdy, but I, I would be uh, ashamed of myself if I started humming um, this this song, this song. Not to shit on this guy more. I, I, I think that. it works in the same, like, trashy sort of way, but LL is probably a better musician. Yeah. Overall. Yeah overall like ever yeah i mean like one well, day if you look yeah. at the body of his work you know <laughs> yeah well that's what i'm saying like ll cool j was around for a long time before he you know retired or just got out of the limelight or whatever mm-hmm. but cobra starship has already broken up you know so god i feel like i'm sounding like i hate well, this guy this... i just find it super annoying yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they even apparently named the band after the the movie, right? Because it's kind of a play on that, where it's like it's our, our I don't know, your your starship's taken off, well, you know. But it's 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 interesting because, like, yeah, that's what I that's what I keep thinking too, and I, I couldn't find any information if that's the case. But the band was formed in two thousand five. This movie didn't come out until two thousand six. But you better believe that they were working on it in like 2004, 2005 in that timeline. So it does oh, yeah. it does make sense that like we're forming a band around this movie because we got this job to make this song. So mm-hmm. we'll just kind of play into it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's probably one of those things where like the record company put them in touch with each other because, you know, yeah. here's an up and coming musician. Here's an up and coming musician. We'll just build a super band. And that's really not how that works uh, but they've been doing it since the beatles you yeah know, yeah that's that's the exception that proves the rule or whatever anyway <laughs> enough about the damn song let's talk right. about the movie i mean it's so paper thin you know like this guy uh sees a murder i i, I do get a little confused but i'll, I'll on to like how he how samuel jackson even connects him to the crime scene but uh so <laughs> The guy sees a murder and it happens because this nasty crime boss is he, he's the guy who's doing the killing and then the guy runs away and gets on his motorcycle so it's just like I know everything's quiet right now and you just saw a murder so it may not make any noise you shouldn't do that you mm-hmm. know but then yeah we'll just rev a motorcycle engine through a forest where no one's around and expect to get away so I mean he he's the, not the going bike to is testify. probably faster than anything that they're driving I, I just would have like lied under a bush. You're in the middle of a forest. Like everything just looks the same. Just wait it out, man. You know, wait it out. Be a coward. Just sit, sit in the bush, wait it out. Don't be here. Go on to live and go on to live another day. You know. Uh, but um, I I felt like the entire opening to the movie was filler because for about four minutes I, I was just like, something happened, something happened because it's just girls. Which, hey, I'm, you know, I'm not a prudish guy. Like, okay, you know, it's, you got some nice scenery here and ah, bikini girls, it's Hawaii. Okay, this is cool. Some surfing, but, yeah. But then they just did that and that and that. And then here's this guy stunting off everything through the countryside. And I was just like, oh, and, right, and I, on a motorcycle. I, I wanted that guy to take off his helmet, who is obviously not Sam Jackson, and just be Sam Jackson. And that was going to be our introduction to his character. Oh, that would have been great. But we, we but... didn't. We didn't get that. No, no. Uh, and also, I just want to add. So it, it does. T- it starts in Hawaii, mm-hmm. you know. And while he's riding his motorcycle, you can definitely tell it's a scenic change because, like, all the cameras are pointing up 
so you can't see the trees, you know, because there are no palm trees when there are trees shown. And those are kind of prevalent in Hawaii. And um, I'm pretty sure they just film most of the motorcycle stuff in the Midwest somewhere, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, back in <laughs> California. Yeah, yeah. So no, they would have I, palm I don't think trees it was there. Yeah. No, there was not palm trees in, in the skyline at all <laughs> for most of that motorcycle stuff. But yeah, so he gets... The, the... Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, uh, Jurassic Park and uh, Lost was filmed in Hawaii. And, you know, I mean, they, they have foresty looking forests there. That's the thing. That's a science term. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It could be. But I'm just saying it was uh, quite odd that there wouldn't be any palm trees anywhere. You know, so. Right. Uh, so he goes to testify. That's the whole thing. He's going to testify against this crime lord, but they got to go to Los Angeles to do it, which also kind of isn't that out of Hawaii's jurisdiction, or is it like the FBI is bringing them in? You know. Well, okay. So I was confused about that, and this is one of my main gripes about the ending of the movie. Um. So in order for him to testify against the guy, um, well, I don't, I don't know if they have trial and absentee. I mean, that, that's the thing. But right. I, I feel like that's a show trial unless you actually have the guy arrested so that you can put him in jail. Because that's the whole point of putting away somebody like that is you've got him arrested. You got the guy to testify against him. You know, kind of like El Chapo or like one of those characters. Yeah. Well, it's an interesting thing. Um, and there's there's been issues of there's been things actually in Michigan. I don't want to go into the details, but um, because uh, it's really sensitive and we don't need to get into it. But um, for example, this one person who did horrendous crimes, uh, he he was told to come in, right? Like you are going to jail. They haven't, they hadn't detained him yet, but they had found him guilty. Well, instead of paying the price, he, uh, you know, he committed suicide. Uh, and it's just like one of those things where it's like, well, if you're going to capture somebody and like bring them in to do the, do the trial. Yeah, no. Yeah. The trial, but, um, you would have them in custody to prevent something like that happening, you know, to get them to like, you know, jail, prison or whatever, you'd want them captured before you're like, hey, we're bringing this witness in to, so that you can be found guilty when you're already free from, you know, law mm -hmm. enforcement, you know, it doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, you're, you're just giving them an opportunity to be a flight risk yeah. or like you said, to kind of take the easy way out. Yep. Yep. Um, so I don't know. I just, it, but at the same time, this movie's like paper thin. Should we be giving it so much grief about well, these things? You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I, I, I guess this is one time where it'll actually make sense to connect the beginning and the ending of the movie instead of what we always do, which is just jump straight to the end. Right. right. Um, so do you think they caught him or did they need his testimony for the indictment? Oh man, because it's kind of unresolved by the end of it. Like they, they land, they get away from all the snakes, but they don't have the guy in custody. You don't really see him in, in the movie after the opening scene. And and that was one of my big problems with it because I just I, realized that <laughs> I felt like yeah. the bad guy just kind of got away with it and we didn't, you know, we never saw him get his comeuppance. So I, I felt like it was really anticlimactic. A bunch of people just died on a plane. <laughs> but we're going to go surf and it's fine. And right. Yeah. Fancy free. Like, Do you, were they in Bali at the last sequence? Like the last scene? Because that was like a really small wave. And Bali is like really far away. So like, do you think like they actually went to Bali to surf that? to surf that small of a wave you can find those size waves in lake michigan <laughs> you know like <laughs> you can so um but yeah no that's a really good point they don't 
there is no just desserts for the criminal, the main guy, you know? Uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, maybe this movie is going down a peg now that we're really like breaking it down. Cause yeah, like he should have been on the plane. He should have been like, yeah, I've been releasing all these snakes in the cargo hold this yeah, whole time. <laughs> yeah. You know? Or, you know, they caught the guy who was using pheromones on the lays, which, okay, you know, you want a reason for snakes to attack people. I, I actually like, the villain's plot you do yeah i mean it's it's dumb but it's creative in uh yeah in a 90s action movie kind of way you know in, in a in a speed kind of way where it's like he, here's this bus that can't drive over 50 miles an hour figure your way out of that you know yeah and i like that aspect of it but elements like that where you, you just didn't, I don't know, like I say, you didn't have any comeuppance and the, the bad guys, the snakes, um, were just kind of doing whatever they're going to do. So none of the bad guys really got punished for anything. And, and to me, and I don't want to be one of these people where it's like, this wasn't a very realistic movie. <laughs> <laughs> right, I don't right. care about that. I just felt that it, it, it seemed kind of empty because you know, like your, your conflict was kind of empty past that. Right. Right. Like the, the, it's like they, the count, the conflict was the snakes, but they forgot about the reason the snakes were there to begin with, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that is a bummer. There should have been some sort of ending scene either at the airport or maybe he was like, well, I'll have to do it myself. And then there's like some sort of conflict between Samuel L. Jackson, the, the witness and the 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 boss there yeah. you know he's just so. dressed like a waiter at the hotel there he is get him chase him <laughs> down right. something right. anything just yeah yeah um god i mean i still keep thinking about why do you think that they would forget that or maybe they shot it and just never put it in there i it's, don't know it's an interesting thing right because when you look at the story like snakes on a plane the whole reason you want to do this movie is because there's snakes on a plane and they're attacking people. Yeah. We shouldn't care about any of that other stuff. Like, we should just want... Right. And I, I think that's partly the other reason why I feel like this movie kind of let me down was because it, it didn't embrace the crazy that the internet obviously wanted it to be, that was it was celebrating it for before it came out, which was this, like, proto meme whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't serious enough to be a credible, like, great, like, speed. like action yeah. classic, like yeah. Speed or, or Die Hard or something. It, right. it could have been. The ingredients were there to go either way. I, I do want to talk about the action scenes, but I, I feel like I've kind of monopolized the conversation. So let's, why do you like it? Let's get into some of that. Because it, it's so silly. Yeah. Like, and that's part of the reason why it's like, I, there are so many things in this movie that if they were in other movies, I would be hypercritical of them. Right. Cause it's just, it's so dumb, but I feel like it's intentional. And when something like that happens, it's like, well, I'm going to let a lot of things slide mm -hmm. because that's kind of the tone of the movie, you know, that it's just stupid. It's like so paper thin. So it, it, it's like a weird it's a weird thing for me because i am a savage when a movie's <laughs> incompetent right yeah when it they, wasn't incompetent just, right but if it seems like it's at least well put together then i'm much more lenient on those shortcomings you know mm -hmm. and it's like you, you go back and look at like dark knight for example right i view i Put that move i have a high regard for that movie but there is a bunch of real dumb shit in that movie you know but then it's like you see the hole and it's like this is a entertaining story you know and it's mm -hmm. pretty well done but then there's like there is really dumb shit in it you know but then i let that slide but then it's like you see that same dumb shit in like i don't know rob zombies halloween you're just like not here not today sir you know, you yeah. know, so it's, it's interesting, but 
for this and and the it's the same thing with the piranha remake you know like both of these movies are not good uh and i wouldn't say like oh this is i wouldn't recommend them to anybody you know like i, I would never recommend snakes on a plane or piranha to people but i like them you know i own both of them i've gone out of oh, my way you? to spend money on piranha i you know I had to order that, that one, one from the uk Oh, that's <laughs> commitment wow yeah yeah um but they're fun i guess that's the, that's the thing it's like it's just a fun watch um and so i i don't get critical but but i do notice them i do notice the issues <laughs> yeah i'm not blind to them so you know and it, like how did the snakes get on the plane that's not explained you know like they were just released suddenly why weren't they there when like the people were on the flight already or like why didn't they start attack because they talk about the pheromones thing mm -hmm. right towards the end of the movie and then uh like well why didn't they start attacking before you know like because pheromones just a drug you know it's like a scent thing so why didn't it trigger them sooner you know well they weren't on the plane yet because they he he was spraying it and he was working in the airport because he's got that thing where it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm spraying it on here, just like you said. And then they're handing him out to the people as they board the plane. The snakes are already on the plane. They're they're down in baggage. Well, I guess that's what I mean, though. Like, so it's like they're in the baggage compartment. The passengers get on with the lays. Should the snakes start coming out then, or do they need to be released? You have to wait until we get to fifteen thousand feet. Oh, <laughs> nah, okay. they just fucked up. <laughs> right right I'm trying to think of other examples i think there was like supposed the... to be some trigger timer release thing okay. uh someone drop a comment let me know because right. i i feel right. like i missed that detail as well because right. there was a whole thing where they zoomed in and you saw that the snakes were like back behind some other stuff mm -hmm. and i i just felt like they had to be on a time release for all of the reasons you listed and more. Right. Um, but by the time I was like, hey, wait a minute. Like, I'm not rewinding this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the other the other thing actually goes back to the beginning. And so, like, the witness escapes, right? And he gets to his hotel room. Okay, first, how does Samuel Jackson know that that's the guy, right? You know, like, oh, he, this is the guy that saw the murder because the witness never told anybody, right? Mm -hmm. But suddenly, like, Samuel Jackson comes in to save the day against the henchman. And it's like, okay, well, how, one, how do they know where he is? And then it's like, there's the interrogation scene. And like, they don't mention anything. And then you just see the Red Bull. So the implication is that the Red Bull container had this guy's fingerprints on it. And then they're able to be like, oh, yeah, he was, he, this guy must have been there. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the other problem it's a can in an area that looks like dirt bikes can go, right? How do we know that it's that this guy just wasn't passing through, you know? And he dropped his Red Bull can, you know? So that's the problem. Like the witness hasn't said anything yet. Samuel Jackson seems to already know the puzzle pieces, you know, like where everything's going to land already. That's, that's bad storytelling. And that's one of the things it that is. I'm letting slide, yeah. you know? So, cause we, we got to get to those snakes on that plane. <laughs> yeah. We got to get there fast, you know? And I, I uh, think that's why they gloss over a lot of that because yeah. I, what I would have done is I, I would have had Sam Jackson find the witness because he was following the bad guys. Like he staked them out. Right. And it's like, oh no, they're on to him because they got eyes everywhere. This is where they followed him back to. All right, I'm going to get out in front of this. Rescues him. You need to come with me. You know. Right. But You're an excellent storyteller, Brian. Oh, well. Is that what it made more sense? <laughs> and that's a really easy thing. That, yeah. that is literally just a scene that's about five seconds long that would have made the made that sequence and beyond make sense, mm -hmm. you know? 
you you would have lost the product placement from Red Bull though. So they right right they, they would have vetoed that idea because that's a hundred grand we didn't just get for the for the budget. <laughs> can, can you imagine just for a second the headache you would get from like spending a really hot day doing a bunch of motorcycle shit through Hawaii? And you're like, I got to hydrate myself with a Red Bull. Yes, actually. <laughs> oh my God, that sounds so painful. I don't, we're not going to get on a tangent here. I, I was doing press <laughs> photography for Newman Haas Racing. That was Paul Newman's racing team back when he was still alive. Yeah. It was amazing. We were on an airstrip, you know, they're, they, they got their Formula One cars driving by the zoom past like you feel it in your bones because the cars are so fast yeah. like it's just powerful but but you're on an airstrip there's no sun okay so i go back into the press tent they have every kind of beer energy drink and pop you could possibly want no water oh jesus so i was drinking um <laughs> I, I won't say it just so i don't want to give them a bad name and yeah, I had a terrible migraine from that because it, it didn't matter. It's like it, it didn't matter how much you had it, it, it. Everything only made you thirstier and you were right, just out right. pouring buckets in the sun. Yeah, it was right. Awful. Like you're already dehydrated. Then you're going to put you're going to pump your body up with caffeine, which is makes you dehydrated already. You yeah. know, <laughs> what a nightmare. Back in the context of the movie, I think it's a bad idea to keep Red Bulls in the like the satchel of your motorcycle because as you're flying through the country you're just shaking that thing up <laughs> yeah and didn't the simpsons have an episode on that where it just is like an atomic explosion after like shaking something up too much okay you're like thinking of the in, like april a fool's day episode oh okay see i, I don't know things you know <laughs> yeah simpsons that's, related and so that's the april fool's day episode bart takes one of homer's beer cans because he's he's because Homer keeps pulling all these like April Fools, like mean April Fools tricks on him. He's like, "I'm gonna get you, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> fool you. I'm gonna fool you up real night, you know." And then, yeah, it, it's supposed to be like this spark from him opening the can because the house is so hot is what causes the explosion. <laughs> it's a cartoon, you know. What, what yeah. are you gonna do? Yeah. But that would be um, that guy, yeah, just Red Bull all over his face. They would have heard him. Oh. She Oh, and then the bad guys would have shot him for uh, being a witness. <laughs> right. So what do you think about, you know, because we, we talked about the beginning and then the there's a, a massive hour-long sequence that's just snake attacks, you know, mm -hmm. so we could go through that. But that's where this movie becomes like, how much did, how many, pa I want to know how many pages do you think this script is? Where it's just like, and they get to the plane and snakes attack, and then there's like text for the ending. Do you think they like knew what they wanted to do by the time they got to the plane? There's like, oh, we'll figure it out as we go. Well, here's a fascinating thing, right? So there's a difference between spec scripts and shooting scripts. And depending, on, so like a spec script is like a, a writer who just writes something and then sends it in. So you got all the action scenes there. Now, Sometimes on a lot of Hollywood movies, they don't want to use the action from the script because it's it doesn't fit whatever their location is. Or they think, hey, we've got a better idea. We have access to this. This is how we're going to do it. So sure. the page in that script, literally, it's a whole white page. And all it says is action scene. And all it's there for is a placeholder. <laughs> <laughs> okay so they worked that out with like storyboards and everything else i don't know what their situation was on this movie okay. i just think like in terms of actual pages yeah i don't know yeah May maybe 50 and then another 30 just said action scene <laughs> okay fair enough i think that's that's a pretty good uh estimate um man there's like every type of snake attack in this movie it's like they got every type of snake every type of snake attack and then like gross things that just happen you know for coming out of barf bangs and well there's there there are the there's like two separate things going on we got this snake attacks which is like there's there's two parts that happen really quickly and close together where it's like oh this director just hates certain parts of the anatomy so for whatever reason you know mm -hmm. and then then there's the other 
things. It's like circumstantial body damage that has nothing to do with snakes, right? So like one of them is like the guy falls down in the aisle and then there's like a stampede of like four people behind him that walk over him. One of them is a woman in heels and stabs a stiletto through a guy's eardrum. Yeah. Which that's gross. I, I don't want to see that. I just, the thought of something that deep inside, like going in that way, just doesn't same with like certain other types of things in horror movies that the I always eye have to look or, yeah. at. Yes, God, the eye. I don't even want to talk about it because it's just so disgusting. But like eye, eye trauma. Can we stop doing that? We need to stop doing that in horror movies. That's too much for me. It's so gross. So there's that, but then it's like, oh yeah, we're we're gonna have snakes attack an eyeball. Oh, and then the other guy got like, there's another guy that got stabbed with like a he fell on like a a screwdriver or something and it stabbed him in his neck through his jugular and then he pulled it out and he's just got his hands up you know and blood going everywhere yeah, I, i'm sorry yeah. post 9 11 tsa never would have let that on there no no i'm pretty sure they might have found the snakes too you know like what's all what's up with these hundreds of snakes in this smelly cargo cage you know so <laughs> it would reek to high heaven too yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i've known a couple of people that have had like reptiles as mm -hmm. pets and that's a, a nasty smell it's like the same kind of it's not the same smell but it's the same pungent smells like someone who has a an awful cat you know that's or just ferret doesn't... oh fair <laughs> i had a friend who had three ferrets as pets growing up three of them shout out Corey. You know who you are. So. <laughs> so one is one is too many. Yeah, one is too many. Yeah, so many ferrets in the nineties. But I digress. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, no, I mean every type of. It, it, and the other thing, when I was watching this, I feel I was like, man, this feels like an aliens ripoff. When the lights go down, it's got all those blue colors everywhere. Yeah, that was the. That was the writer's inspiration was like, I want to do aliens, but I guess I'll do it with snakes. I, I think I think we all want to do aliens. Like it's we all space. want to make move aliens. Yeah. Yeah. I just I need some red lights flashing back here and I could do aliens right now. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everything's aliens if it's dark blue with like white highlights, you know? Mm -hmm. So um but uh, yeah, I thought it was interesting because you could definitely see it. And that's more of like the director and like, you know, uh, I, I'm drawing a blank, uh, director of photography. But uh, it's interesting that that was like in the script writing thing. It's like, yeah, a huge inspiration was Aliens. The other inspiration came from like some article the writer read about snakes entering cargo ships in World War II. I'm guessing because of like food or something. But oh, there was oh. a snake problem with cargo planes i guess it was pretty bad in world war ii so yeah, never would have guessed snakes on a plane would have been ripped from the headlines right, right. <laughs> based on a true story well what's funny is like the algorithm google's algorithm is like half movie and then like half real life encounters of snakes being on planes you know oh, and some yeah yes i came across like a couple of stories where it was like and i just clicked on a couple of them like to see what they were talking about but yeah someone someone had like shoes in their um carry-on and then there was a boa constrictor in one of them now boa constrictors can be quite large i didn't find any pictures of it but yeah it was like shedding its skin inside of this woman's shoe coming from australia to new york I was so. going to say this has to be <laughs> Australian. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's crazy. Like, you know, when they warn you, if you go down there, like check your shoes before you put them on, because there could be scorpions in them. Mm -hmm. uh, just everything in Australia wants to kill you. It's just. Yeah. The, even the air wants to kill you. Like in the summertime, that place is just on fire. You know, it's a fireball. Man. So, uh, but uh, yeah. So yeah, there, it's like, it's really funny because it was like snakes on, I had to do snakes on a plane movie, 
you know, to get the the real stuff that I wanted to get to. So, wow. yeah. Man, I really want to talk about the, the co-pilot, though, because that's okay. a funny story. Yeah. So I actually, at Cleveland, when I was, uh, I had my artist, uh, Allie, set, our table set up there at Cleveland uh, Fan Expo. And uh, he was there. The actor was there, right? Doing like photo ops and signings and everything. I don't know who wants his autograph, but I mean, he's kind of popular. But he was in the office and Krampus and the movie Waiting. That's what I remember him from. I forgot he was in the office. But anyways, I'm minding my own business. It's kind of slow, right? And I think I'm like looking through my phone or thinking up some ideas or something. And he just walks right into my table like right up next to it. And I have like my head down. So I, I only see like someone's waist, like right here, because I'm like looking down at something. And I look up and he goes, hi, I'm from Hollywood. I'm famous. That's all he said to me. And then he walked away. Really? And then, and then he goes to the next table and he says the exact same thing. So he's just walking up, walking up and down Artist Alley, saying the exact same thing to everybody not like starting a conversation and just walking to the next person so like around the same time he was arrested for a dui so i can't say that he was drunk at the show but it could be a possibility and uh he's done that multiple times this year getting a getting a dui Yep. this year wow yeah well and it also Once started off usually enough to lose your license uh <laughs> you, you would think so right oh so but like, then he's probably driving or someone without it maybe or right well some state like michigan's really strict like if you get a second dui you're like hey okay the only way you can start your car is by like a uh a, a, what, what do they call that lock your steering wheel lock yeah, your ignition. it's like a like breathalyzer a, yeah yeah like they put that on your car put you on a tether or like probation yeah. no alcohol whatever the, you know? the first one is i would like, imagine is pretty steep as well but they really start screwing it tight it, later it, it's like 10 grand in legal fees yeah you lose i think you lose your license for six months you have to attend meetings and everything yeah, you gotta do a lot here and that's yeah. your first offense yeah Michigan doesn't play around with that. But man, if you go over to Wisconsin, they don't take your license away for DUIs. You can just keep that's where he that. lives in. I don't know where this guy lives. Well, he said oh. he was from Hollywood. So oh, maybe yeah. from there, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. I thought you were uh, but maybe... I, no, but it started off on New Year's Eve. He got drunk. Which, okay, like if you're going to get drunk and then end up getting pulled over, like I guess that's the only time of year. It was December 31st going into the 1st, right? I'm not excusing drunk driving. I'm just saying like there's probably a high probability that a lot of DUIs happen on New Year's Eve, Yeah, you know? But man, TMZ like covered that shit like crazy. That was wild because I just looked up like this guy's name and like DUI and it was like, they covered the whole thing. They were following him around. So it was like they found out that he crashed his car into a stop sign and blew two tires. It's TMZ, I believe it. Yeah. So they like followed him around and it was like the next day he's, I don't know if he got arrested or whatever, but like he's filling up his gas or filling up his car at the gas station. And there's just nasty dents on the, <laughs> the passenger side car from wheel to wheel. Like the rims are scratched up, the bumpers kind of hanging off. I'm just like, oh, okay. So no. kind of a weirdo, kind of a weird guy. So that's what I well know about him. Multiple yeah. DUIs though. He that's usually so plays kind of off-putting people in movies. Too. Yes. Because like here he's like Mr. Sexual Harassment, which I know this came out in 2006, but... Even back then, this guy would have been like up on discipline. Like, yeah, like you, the airline wouldn't have put up with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not at all. Um, another thing, uh, the reason that I wa I brought this up is because I watch a lot of weird shit on YouTube, and stuff gets recommended to me. Somehow, I came across the video of his second DUI arrest. 
because it was like Freedom of Information Act. Someone found out that he got arrested in Ohio, I believe, for DUI. <laughs> so okay. there's like a body cam footage of this guy doing the, uh, what are they? The the tests. The sobriety uh, test. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So. Seeing yeah, his face that again reminded me that I saw that movie. <laughs> so, that that's for, guaranteed exactly. that like TMZ or one of those tabloids because like that that's one of the most ridiculous freedom of information requests you could possibly you know, right like there there's important things we need answered that you could be using your journalistic power for like now this guy's <laughs> drunk this guy's drunk over here we we need that freedom of information this guy's playing Galaga freedom of yeah. press <laughs> thought we wouldn't yeah. notice but we did yeah yeah. Yeah, well, I, I wonder if they just get tipped. Like, if there's just people that are like, "Oh, I, I have this information," and it's just like a, a tip line that they go through. It must be, you know. Anyways, what are you gonna say? I was gonna say, let's talk about some of the the other people in this. The um, sure, because that there was one one of the flight attendants I recognized was Lynn Shea. Yes. Yeah. Um, from uh, Insidious. That's what I remember her from. Well, yeah, she's developed kind of a cult following of her own. Uh, she was in some of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies because she's Bob Shea's wife. Who oh, my God. used to be okay. the head of New Line. New Line Cinema. Yeah. And um, she was in a movie with Ray Wise where they played a husband and wife. Ray Wise was a Twin Peaks actor. He was also um, Leon Nash in RoboCop, you know, another yes. cult actor. So, um yeah, no, I, I thought that was fun to see her pop And Juliana up and, Margulies is in it. You know, she's ER famous, you know? Yeah, ER that. famous. I don't know the name of the actress, but the one that played Tiffany came on to The Witness, like, so hard and fast. I was like, yeah. that's a bad guy. She's a plant. Like, yes. And that just never happened. Like, nah, she's just horny. Like, they never, really? It never went in there. It never went anywhere. Right. And I thought like I thought that too. Right. Like she was a plant, like trying to get information or that she thought she was he was like rock star famous. And then it's like, oh, you're a snitch. I don't I don't deal with snitches, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, like because nothing ever happens beyond that. Oh, and then. uh, As the guy from SNL was in this one, but he was uh, like Good Burger guy at the time. Um, Was he the scientist? No, he was like one of the bodyguards to that rapper who flies the plane down. Oh, okay. He's uh, he's playing the PSP. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, PSP. <laughs> that's rip. <laughs> that's a that's a timeless movie right there. Right, right. I bet you oh, I think this was one of the movies that came out on UMD as well. Like oh one one of the doomed God. formats where like I do you ever play PSP? I did not, but I wanted one, not because of the games, but because I was like, oh, you can watch movies on the go. This is how old yeah. this technology is, you know? They were like, like portable UMD. little DVDs. Yeah. And yeah, basically only DVDs. Sony movies came out on them. Yeah. The, uh, I, I had one. I only had two physical games. Everything, because my whole thing was like, because digital games were a new thing. And I was like, hey, like, this is awesome. I can have my whole library right here instead of, like, pulling crap out to put it in. But, <laughs> yeah. like, those UMDs, man, like, you put one in there and you're like, oh, th- this thing has rumble. Like, it's getting ready to take off. It's the drive spinning up. <laughs> yeah, I um, I always wanted one. And then I wanted a PS Vita. Um, you had one of those, I believe. I, I do, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. liked it. I thought it was a cool system. I liked the touchscreen stuff. That OLED screen, that was the first thing that, that was like really forward thinking that had an OLED screen in it. Gorgeous looking. Yeah, oh, it v- was stunning. Vita was a cool system, but let's, we've talked enough about video games. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> you playing that yeah. game or that game playing you? That was another guy who was just like Mr. Sexual Harassment waiting to happen. Like, he wouldn't survive in the Instagram age. Like, people would be Snapchatting that and like... <sighs> Half of these people would get would not survive social media today. No shot. Like it would be like, and you're canceled, and mm-hmm. you are too, and you don't have a job anymore because uh, we don't like you. The internet said we don't like you anymore, so get the hell out of here. Get down. You know, yeah. yeah. So many people. I don't think anyone. Uh, 
I mean, like the the stewardess who came onto the passenger and witness protection, she would have been fired because, like, you just can't do that. You know, <laughs> like I don't yeah. know. Even though that's that's a very like textbook fantasy, where it's <laughs> we're, yeah, we're gonna join the Mile High Club. Like, yeah, yeah, no, none of that's happening. <laughs> right they have right. rules in place to stop new people <laughs> right hey did you happen to notice uh that the same bomb diffuser working side by side with nicholas cage is the snake expert in this movie that's where i knew him from <laughs> yes so my in my mind i'm like oh he left the bomb diffusing career it was like i'm gonna go into snakes and then finds himself in this predicament. <laughs> you know, like, I'm trying to get away from these terrorists, man. <laughs> yeah, same guy. But, you know, it's it would be easy not to recognize him because of all the water flowing and hazmat suit wearing, you know. Yeah, right. Basically, he's got the one scene where you suck, like, shooting the darts at the <laughs> table. Yeah, yeah. That'll be five dollars, this one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, he one thing about the snake bites we can get back to that for a second sure this i felt like this kind of i know they're all different kinds of snakes but i kept having like alien versus predator flashbacks right where it's like there's rules but we're going to totally ignore them just to bend it to our timetable where it's like this person gets bit by a snake oh my God, they're dead and then the kid gets bit by a snake and it's like well we're gonna save him because it's just on the arm like, right yeah because there's that one lady she gets bit on the mouth or something on like the lower lip and it's like it comes out of the barf bag yes yes and then like two minutes later she's like her pace is puppy puppy and she's drooling mm -hmm. but then like the 20 pound kid gets bit in the arm and like it seemed like an hour went by where he didn't have any treatment <laughs> no you know? treat yeah it was just getting worse but that's all it was it was just getting worse yeah and then the, the venom got sucked out. But I was like, an hour to two minutes, you know? Like, yeah. it's a big time discrepancy there. Yeah. But I, I don't know if sucking it out would work at that point. It's probably in your bloodstream. That and, yeah, like, you know, gangrene is probably setting in at this point, you know? Wow. So, gross. So he's dead. <laughs> yeah, that kid's toast. Uh, that's uh, one of the surprising things that I thought. Usually you do not see, like, violence towards kids under a certain age in movies mm -hmm. i was really kind of surprised that they they let a, a kid get snake bit in this movie but he was like five years old you mm -hmm. know yeah um May, i don't know May, maybe just because it wound up working out okay for him but yeah right. no it's <laughs> or they just blow him away if you're macking me <laughs> right <laughs> yeah yeah you're dead yeah we're Oh my God, I can't believe that still happened. Anyways. Um, Here, what, here what, is my other yeah. issue with the snakes scene, like all the attack with the yeah. snakes, is I felt like once it hit the fan, you just had these attacks come in waves, yes. which didn't make any sense. Did I miss something? It's like, oh my God, the snakes are all out, people getting bit, stabbed in the ear with stilettos, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just stops. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know either. And then it but starts again. I'm... It's like it stops just yeah. long enough for them to have a conversation and then it starts again. Yes. And then, like, also, like, they, they wanted to use the suitcases to make a barricade, which I like that idea. Barricade yourself in. But snakes can get through just about anything. Right. So I would imagine one that there's enough space, even if you got everything piled up that snakes could like wiggle through and get through the barricade. Mm -hmm. But they never put it up to the ceiling. <laughs> so they could just crawl over it. That's not a barricade. That's just a no. obstruction. You know, I, I did like their barricade with the life raft. Yes. But my question is, where the fuck did that come from? Because they're like, we have all these suitcases. Oh, we got a boat. We got a flotation device, mm -hmm. you know, and that just kind of seemed like it came out of nowhere. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they actually have those on planes or not. If anybody's in the air traffic industry and you can answer that question for us, that'd yes, be nice please, to know. Please leave a comment below. Have you ever, 
seen a plane that where the first class is upstairs? Yes. What what yeah. airline were you on? Oh, um, is that I must Delta? just fly the, the pauper airlines because I've only been on the ones where it's like you go through, like you board through first class and then the curtain shuts and you're just. Like you're not well, even allowed up there to use the bathroom, even though it's like oh. I, I got the seat right in front of the plane. <laughs> like right in the back, um, peasant. You wait. <laughs> the the one time that I saw it was going to Japan, and I think the only reason that I did is because it was two levels, so they're just carrying as many people as they possibly can in one plane, then mm -hmm. having like multiple trips for the same amount of people. But it it's I mean I've only flown like. I should say only because it, it is, you know, some people probably haven't flown and I've had the luxury of flying multiple places, but um, I've flown like six or seven times and I've only seen it that one time. So it's got to be a pretty okay. rare thing or right. for like super long distances, you know? Yeah. Like uh, transatlantic flights or. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I remember one, one time. Which I can I... see. I mean, you know, Hawaii is usually a stop off on the way to mm-hmm yeah or you fly over it i had a sense of dread uh because that was the last landmark i would see until we got to japan i'm like there's nothing here there's nothing mm. here bye bye land oh i still got another 14 hours <laughs> so, <laughs> that's wild um no but uh i haven't seen a plane this open that's what i'll say about it like it, it is it's a movie plane yeah it's not yes a, like there's not a grand staircase in any <laughs> any two level plane ever that's that's like a waste of space that is dollars that they're waiting that they are wasting that they could have used for seats you mm -hmm. know no shot and also how weak man how weak are those uh arm rails on those stairs where it was like the slightest amount of turbulence caused everyone to crash off and like fall off the stairs and break themselves on numerous pieces of glass. Yeah. All right. I do. There was a very funny moment for this, for me, at least. You want to guess what it was? I, I laughed really hard at this. And it's when the anaconda shows up, right? It like crashes through the light fixtures. I don't know how it got in there, but this giant, like 20 foot snake comes crashing in. Right. And everyone's screaming to death because everything's going sideways uh -huh. again, you know, and um, there's that one woman and she has the that chihuahua, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he takes, some guy takes that chihuahua and throws it at the anaconda. So the anaconda attacks the dog and like winds up around that to distract it. That shit was so fucking wow. funny. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty this brutal. Is, it's pretty brutal, but I think that's the most realistic thing that would happen in that moment, right? If that, there is an anaconda on a plane, you're like, man, I gotta, I gotta, well, get its yeah, attention away from me. <laughs> some There's someone would be heartless dog. enough to do that. Like someone else would take someone's dog, like their beloved pet, and do that because it's. You know, after you comes me, like, screw you, I'm getting away. Like, it, it may or may not be me. I'm just going to throw that out there. If, there's, if it's me, someone, and their puppy, that's a chihuahua. All right, let's be clear. I just don't like small dogs. Specifically? Like, that's... Yeah. Okay. Well, I've gotten, I've gotten scarred up from small dog bites, you know? So I, I just have a prejudice against them at this point. But uh, yeah, I would definitely throw that chihuahua at the anaconda to save myself. You know, I, I, didn't, I would not feel bad about it. I, you know what I'm I didn't know kidding. came from this horrible. movie was the uh, when the snake goes in the microwave, when the flight attendant throws the snake in there. And he's like, yeah. yeah, who's your daddy now? I've, I've heard that sampled before, and I, I had no idea it was from this movie. Like sampled in music or like uh, just ran, yeah, random Just stuff. media, just different okay. stuff. Sporting events. Yeah, you know, soundboard, <laughs> video gamey stuff. Oh, I want a soundboard. Can we make that happen for the podcast? Make a soundboard for me? No. 
<laughs> you would use your powers for ill. I will not allow that. <laughs> I would love it. I would love it. The other thing that bothered me was right at the end of this movie, right? So it's like the the music's getting super optimistic. It's like light. They're off the plane. Everyone's getting evacuated. They're going down the the slide. Mm -hmm. And uh, the music was like really, really happy, like corny happy. And I was like, oh, some shit's going down. It's going to happen. Something's about to happen. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. Yeah, we're going surfing. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, why would you play such happy music yeah. without like it? Because it was almost like so out of place that it was like, oh, it's setting up something, you know? Well, I think their version of that was when the snake drops literally out of thin air and attacks the guy. And then Sam Jackson just shoots him. Wait, yes. Okay, let's not forget that there's been no pre established thing that he put on a, a bulletproof vest. Not pre-established, no. It's not out of the realm of possibility. They do have witnesses travel with those things on, you yes. know, all right, I'll 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 give you this one movie, even though we're playing. But I said, it's like, dead, dead, he's dead. Well, I my thought was like, there's no way that snake stopped the bullet. <laughs> you know? there's. I was thinking there's no way we didn't see that under his t-shirt the whole time because those things are right. thick. <laughs> they are thick. And it makes people like, it makes them have like the straightest posture ever, yeah you know because they're not so, flexible right they are not no yeah and you know what despite everything i still like this movie i still like it and i would watch it again i'm glad i finally watched it it's still my type of movie it's not going to make any top 10 lists but man it's good i didn't hate good it enough. i just i i guess i was let down because I, it wasn't crazy it wasn't enough to to make blue sea yet you know, see, even that right where it's like, you know, a, a movie like this kind of try it when it was trying to be camp, it was like intentionally camp. And that only works when it's really, really funny. Whereas in the case of Deep Blue Sea, they weren't trying to be campy at all. Like, it's just. Oh, you don't think so? It's in Deep Blue like Sea. They, yeah. No. Like they were going for it. I and think it just they were. Into, yeah. OK. And it turned into camp. Yeah. Okay. And 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 here the yeah. camp doesn't really work for, for me um uh, just because it wasn't funny enough often enough to be like oh it's this kind of movie and then yes. they kind of go back to like well it's speed or die hard trying to be serious, you know, it's just, Yeah. Yeah. I I like I like the cast. It was produced well. It's I mean, you know, it had a 30 million dollar budget. The the CG really dates it. I mean, that's probably the worst thing that I can say about it. We have we've gone it this does. whole time without talking about that. The CG yeah, I, is bad. It's it is very bad. But you know what made it worse for me? Because I was kind of like okay with it looking bad because it all looks bad, right? But then when they showed real snakes in the tanks, mm -hmm. or, you know, like at the end when they captured the guy who like made them cr made the snakes crazy, I was like. Oh, there's real snakes in there, and it 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 my suspension of disbelief stopped because now I had the real comparison instead of just dealing with fake snakes. I'm like, oh, these I was believing that they were real, mm -hmm. even though they looked fake because they were all fake, right? So but then fake. they showed me the real one, and I had a comparison. I'm like, oh yeah, they're just fake. They're just fake. So yeah. it took me out of the element. You know, it was I was even believing it. It was even pretty obvious when they just had like the rubber snakes too, which I, I think we could have done more with that. And it probably would have like lent itself to a more like more towards the tone that they thought they were going for. But see, I think part of it too is it's almost a little unfair to judge the movie in retrospect on that, which I'm totally doing. <laughs> but, you know, but I, I can't help it because of the order that I learned about the movie in. And I maybe that's why people kind of turned on it is because they didn't know when they were making the movie that it was going to produce the reaction that it did. And that's why they went back and did some reshooting on it to try to like play up those elements, but it's still not quite enough. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, I do feel like it's kind of like half in, half out, 
where it should have leaned into one way or the other, you mm-hmm. know, like been a little bit more serious or go like a little bit more silly, you know? Mm-hmm. So it just, just really kind of own it, you know? And then, uh, bring it. the last, what's that? Bring it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The last thing I, I, I didn't like was the whole, like, we're going to blow a hole in the side of the plane to get all the snakes out because like, what I would have imagined happened, like anacondas are heavy snakes. They're super long, just monstrous creatures. I, I was like, oh, they're going to get all the little snakes out except the badass one. And they're going to have to do some fighting against a giant anaconda for the rest of the movie. You know? Mm-hmm. Now, the, the big anaconda got sucked out too. So it's like, oh man, missed opportunity. Because that's what I thought it was going to be gonna all the snakes are gone except this one and he is gonna tear everybody up you know Mm -hmm. but be the big boss battle yeah so what do you think is this a good assassination method no no i i think it follows the kind of um pablo escobar let's bring down a whole plane to kill one person like level of villainy yeah uh you know, and Jackson even has the line there where it's, I mean, they, they even question the plausibility of it themselves. And they, they're like, yeah, but, you know, planes are so fragile that, like, they could just be in the wiring and take the whole thing down. And that's absolutely true. Yeah. So it was clever. Um, but see, that's why I think having a twist there with Tiffany being, being an eight, like a double agent would have been great because that that's, that's your ace in the hole. That's your guarantee that those snakes are going to get that fucking guy because you gave him the poison lathe. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I agree. That would have made it pushed it up a little bit higher, maybe even up over the top. And it would have made more sense why the, we never see the bad guy again. You've really thought about this, Brian. You have thought about this. I haven't, like, though. <laughs> it's like just... the, plot, the plot holes. And like, I'm like, hey, I would do this and it would be better. And you're like, yeah, you're right. I've done that a few times. <laughs> In just a couple areas, they could have done these things and it would have been, I think, like a much better movie, you know? I'm available and... for script doctoring, Hollywood, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll watch this one again. I liked it. Yeah, it, it was a movie. I didn't hate it. I just, I, I wanted more. I just wanted more of either. Like, I wanted it to be speed or I wanted it to be crazy. And that that's kind of where it falls flat for me. So, I'm just, since I, I really do want to land this yes. plane, but since yes. we promised, or I promised, audience review <laughs> on this. Let's hear them. I'm excited about this. All right. Okay. I'm not going to read them all. I'm just going to pick a couple lines here and there okay so this is hunter rives from three years ago this is off of google Mm -hmm. this movie is a cinematic masterpiece and it's something every generation should experience the writing is witty yet emotional and the film has superb pacing along with a standout performance from lead male role played by samuel l jackson who is an american treasure i agree and truly was deserving of an oscar for his role an oscar Mm, I okay, mean, wait, so that's unironic. Like, do you think this person is like funny at all? Like they have five stars. <laughs> oh my God. Andrew Mulligan. Oh. This is five months ago. Some Ooh, folks okay. are looking far too serious at reviews. It's a B movie creature feature that clearly doesn't take itself seriously. I kind of agree. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that goes against it now is that the CGI looks outdated now. Five stars. There's other ones, but I mean, it's <laughs> no, just... No, so let's get some more in. I think those are good. I think okay. those are good. Because it's basically kind of treading around some of the same things. My favorite one is that this is a cinematic masterpiece that should be enjoyed by any every generation. We're not going to do better than that. We should just close the no. close the show down on that right now. I agree. <laughs> I, I'd watch it again. I agree with you. I don't think I'd recommend it to anyone. It's it's not bad. It's well made. Yeah. Well, it's one of those movies where it's like, I here, here's why. I like it, but 
But I think if I recommended this to people and they watched it, they would judge me for something. Mm. You know, they'd be like, what? Why would you? Huh? Why would you make me watch this? You said it, you liked it. I'm like, I, I do like it. I'm like, well, it was a piece of shit. I'm like, I, I know. But like, I like it. And they're like, you like pieces of shit? You know, yeah. So you see where the conversation yeah, right, goes, right. you know? So yeah, that's why. That's why I wouldn't recommend it. I had fun though. I had fun watching it. I had fun talking about it. Maybe you will too, audience. Check it out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Or don't. You or, just yeah. I mean, you just heard us talk about it and we kind of we kind of talked about everything. It really is paper thin. Sometimes not... you need to see movies though that people build up where it's like they don't like them. You're just like, "Oh, I got to see this." Ah, maybe that's I, you. Maybe you can enjoy it for that. Or maybe you'll just maybe le that legitimately is... enjoy the Oscar-worthy performance that Samuel L. Jackson gives that he was snubbed in this foul yes. year of our lower 2006. Yeah, the Academy really, I mean, they, they got to acknowledge their faults because it should have gone to him, yep. you know? So, all right. Well, follow us on our social media. Links are down below. If you're listening, they're down below as well. They're in the, you know, show description now. Yep. So we'll That's catch right. you in the next one. All right. Are we talking about Anaconda? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's it. <yeah. laughs> I've had it with this podcast. <laughs> <laughs>